Hello, welcome to Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm Nikki Eisenhower, your host, life coach, and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing goodbyes in 2021 and the law of attraction. Goodbyes are really important, but they're really easy in our busy modern society to sort of toss to the side. Goodbyes offer us some time, some space to reflect and then get to the business of getting done with what we need to get done with and finish. A goodbye is the closing of a chapter or the closing of a book. The law of attraction says that When I know what I don't want, I know what I do want. So if I know what I want to say goodbye to, it informs what I want to say hello to. Each end of the year invites us to say goodbye to so very much. So I hope there's something about this episode that lets you sort out what may be a powerful clearing healthy goodbye for you as we say goodbye to 2021 and get ready to say hello to our 2022. Now, before I get into this list, I want to tell you about a little game that I play. And as a light worker, as a therapist, as a healer, a big part of what a light worker has to do to be able to effectively work with people is learn to let go of control, to let go of expectations to let go of outcomes sometimes and be present for the journey. Now we must acknowledge what we need to let go of to be able to let go of it. So there's a little game that I play to be able to let go and you can borrow this game for the ways that it might be useful and helpful in your world. And the name of the game is if I controlled all things in the universe. And that's the list that I made for you today. This is a list of if I controlled all things in the universe, highly sensitive people would say goodbye to these things. Now, the way that I play the game with myself is I list out the things and then at the end of listing out whatever I don't really control or I want to control all of. And when I'm done my list, when I'm done purging, when I'm getting it out of my system, If I controlled all the things in the universe, after I get it out of my system, I then say to myself in the universe, oh yeah, that's right. I don't control any of this. And then I can let go. When we invite such a game or such a tool into our lives, what it does is it gives us the exercise that strengthens the healing muscles, our resiliency muscles our letting go muscles, our muscles that help us navigate this world with more healthiness and less stress, less anxiety. So that's a little game that we can play with ourselves to acknowledge that there are parts of us that want to control all the things and then remind us, oh yeah, we don't. And so therefore we can let go. Just like in everything that I share, take what works for you and leave the rest. That really is part of how we embody the name of the show, being an emotional badass, that we don't just align with people that agree with us or speak narratives that resonate with us. We learn from lots of people with lots of differing opinions and ideas and friction and contrast. So take what works for you and leave the rest here and always. So if I controlled all things in the universe, Highly sensitive people would say goodbye in 2021 to, number one, all sensations of worry. Worry does nothing but waste time and energy. And in this way, ooh we does worry disrespect us. We have a lot of power to change our relationship with worry, to decide I will no longer allow it to disrespect me, to disrespect my time and my energy. If I have a concern, I can explore my options, my options of action. 
And I can either do something, not do something, or let go. But I will not indulge worry. Worry is not a badge of honor. Worry is a drain. And we have the power to refuse it. Now, in my own life, I have done tremendous work on this for almost two decades. Worry and fretting have been made in the last few years into virtue signals. And you can play those games with worry and fretting if you so wish. But I got to challenge you to see what kind of prize you get for entertaining worry. If I controlled all things in the universe, highly sensitive people would ground themselves. They would use their beautiful stubbornness to cast a spell of ease and self-respect. Refusing these narratives of worry in so many ways. And the more aware that we get as a culture and as individuals, the more likely we are to worry. So we have a choice Maybe this year will be your year where you choose to say goodbye to worry. So inside of myself and to share with you, I am affirming in this moment, goodbye, neurotic obsessing. Hello, grounded personal power. The next thing that I invite you to consider saying goodbye to is wondering how. Now, how do we do that? Why would we want to give up or say goodbye to wondering how? We have the option to shift into this kind of self-talk that affirms who we are instead of questions how. I trust who I am, and I trust that who I am is someone who does not stop until it's figured out. I can trust who I am over what may or may not happen to me. In this highly sensitive tribe, there seems to be a universal thread of fear. But how am I going to get there? How am I going to figure it out? How am I going to make that happen? Is there something wrong with me that I don't have the vision of exactly how I'm going to get there? On the individual level and on the collective level, I really wonder if we could bottle and measure it, how much energy is wasted wondering how I'm going to get there. Sensitive people, all of you, you're so resilient. It doesn't matter how you feel. Look back at your life. The fact that you are still here is proof of your resiliency. What would it be like to trust your resiliency, your ability to bounce, to learn, and to cope with whatever life throws you, whether you like it or you hate it or something in between. You don't have to burn up your energy wondering how. What would it be like to say goodbye to that kind of wondering, fretting? It winds up being a message to the self of, but I must know, I should know. Unknowns are always terrible and scary. I must know. I must figure this out. And we burn up so much energy in that realm. What happens to our lives if we can say goodbye to that and shift to, I don't need to know how. I merely need to do the next thing on my path. And then the next thing. And then the next thing. And then the next thing. Pivoting and adjusting as I go. I no longer need to fear how I trust that I have always figured it out. This is who I am. We have the option to say goodbye doubt. Hello, self-trust. When you know that, that neurotic desire to know what's coming quiets because you actually are grounding yourself in trusting that no matter what comes, it's figure outable. Number three, if I controlled all things in the universe and could cast a magic spell of what highly sensitive people could say goodbye to finishing out 2021, number three would be wondering if there is a right way. Rarely is there one right way. There are multiple right ways. There is the next thing, but not necessarily the right thing. And a lot of you out there stall out looking for the right thing 
instead of permission to act on the next thing. When we act on the next thing with more fluidity, more permission, more execution, more action, only then do we know if that next thing was right. And if it's right, we'll stay there for a while. And if it's not, we'll go on to the next thing that we cross our fingers and hope is the next right thing. And again, if it works, we'll stay there. And if it doesn't, we'll hop to the next lily pad. What happens to your life if you commit in 2022 to just doing what you know needs doing in all your messy human glory? Is this your year that you say goodbye, perfectionism, hello, good enough, and getting it done? How does that feel to you when you hear me say that? That there is a world, there is an availability to you that we can practice into knowing that we are good enough and that we can shift into getting it done as we say goodbye to that perfectionism. Goodbye, perfectionism. Hello, good enough and getting it done. Number four. If I controlled all things in the universe, highly sensitive people across the globe would say goodbye forever to caring about what other people think and to caring about what they feel. That might sound callous to some of you if you're new to my work. might sound cold. And that's not the goal when we're highly sensitive or empathic. Trying to manage the emotions of others, that is a losing, people-pleasing game before we even start. This might be the most grounded, simplistic way I can say this to you. Isn't it enough to manage your own thoughts and emotions? Isn't that plenty? Why would any of us give ourselves the hellish job to have to manage ourselves plus everybody else's emotions, reactions, thoughts, judgments? So all you people pleasers out there that recognize that your energy is precious, that your body might even be healing from some adrenal fatigue, exhaustion, This is a really fantastic goodbye. When we say goodbye to the people pleaser, to all of those behaviors, to those stresses that we carry around in our body and on our minds, we have so much more energy. We can invest in our lives. Goodbye, codependent over-functioning, and hello, actual self-care. Now the fifth thing that my big heart hopes for highly sensitive people that they will be able to say goodbye to in this 2021 year is the fear of loneliness. So as a human tribe and certainly as a highly sensitive smaller tribe, loneliness is a very pervasive and modern problem. But my challenge is that it's not the actual loneliness It's the fear that the loneliness means something's wrong with you. That tends to really get a highly sensitive person. When we let go of the fear of what it means about us, that there are 8 billion people on the planet and that we're lonely in this moment, when we let go of that fear, we have the space to actually practice self-love. What would it be like to not be scared of being lonely? What would it be like to embrace the opportunities found in loneliness. We have the opportunity to lean in and really, really, as corny as it sounds, learn to show up as our own best friend, to nurture us through our loneliness, to teach our inner child that they can depend on grown-up us and that they are never alone because the adult inside all of us is always there for our inner children. I know that it's hard to buy into or believe in if you're really feeling hurt in the loneliness department right now. And the holidays certainly brings that up and out for many, many, many people. But what if you could say goodbye to that fear? Goodbye to any sort of lingering wrongness around being singular or physically alone in any given moment. What happens to our lives if we say, goodbye, loneliness, fear, hello, becoming my own best friend, 
and really learn how to do that in the coming year. Few things are as healing, as soul nurturing, as doing the work to learn how to not feel empty and terrified when we are singular. You know, if I talk to somebody about going to college and getting my degrees, it's something that college gave me. Like those degrees are something that I earned. And once I have them, they can never be taken away. They are mine. And something about that is very affirming. That might be a weird thing for me to equate to loneliness. But that's how the work of healing loneliness from a dysfunctional or neglectful childhood feels Once we know how to really, truly love ourselves and be our own best friend, it does feel, like I said, my degrees felt to me. It feels like this beautiful, earned knowledge, this knowing, this connection to self that nobody and nothing can take away from you. And yes, if I controlled all things in the universe... I could snap my fingers and every single person listening right now and beyond who wasn't even listening would be able to feel safe and befriended by their own self. Goodbye, loneliness and fear. Hello to my own ever-present best friend. Number six, if I controlled everything in the universe, all highly sensitive people would let go of denying their gut. Goodbye, gut denial. I wonder how much energy as a tribe all of us have collectively felt about being frustrated and mad at ourselves for all of the moments of our lives that we ignored our own gut, that we denied our intuitive response that we left our intuitive knowing and went right up to our heads and created stories that made sense out of denying ourselves. And then we got really frustrated, angry, annoyed, pissed off at ourselves, feeling like we're beating our head against the wall. Why is it so hard to learn this lesson of trusting my gut? So much energy in the vein of this frustration for our tribe. What if we said goodbye to no longer denying our intuitive gut. What might happen in your life, in your relationship with yourself, with surviving instead of thriving, with breaking old patterns? It's an amazing thing to say goodbye to self-dismissal and hello, self-regard. Number seven, if I controlled all things in the universe... Every highly sensitive person would let go of COVID uncertainty and roller coasters. Yep, that's what I'm calling it. We're about two years in, you guys. We know enough. No matter what our different takes are, we might be following different sciences out there. But no matter what you follow or what you're believing in, in terms of COVID, we're far enough along that we don't have to get on any more roller coasters. The ride can be over. At this point, we all can settle on a strategy and let go of the fretting. If your nervous system feels activated or you feel thrown off course, each time you see a politician or a government official or an entity declare something about this illness, then decide your strategy and settle so that their different declarations don't throw you. You can give that to yourself. So for 2022, you all are tasked with deciding what you take forward into the new year from the COVID roller coastering and what you let go of. Goodbye, COVID coaster. Hello, life and living. All right, number eight. Highly sensitive people, what would happen to your life if you said goodbye to the expectation that other people could connect to you as deeply as you want? We have the option to say goodbye to this sort of wanting. It's a wanting as a sensitive person that our inner children really hold on to. They very much believe that if they just say the right words, if they explain enough in just the right way, 
that we can make anybody deep, 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 deep. And then we can plug into that depth from our depth. And the reality is that we face accepting that we are the really deep people. We are the seekers. And we can let go. We can quit. We can say goodbye to the expectation that other people can meet us right there. And that might seem sad at first, and there might be some grief to be had there. But there's so much freedom when we start accepting who people really are that are around us, what they're really into and capable of, and we just accept them as they show up. We wind up projecting our own depth onto other people and then create an expectation that they can go there. This is a big place where we sneakily burn up a lot of energy as highly sensitive people. So for this goodbye, we have the option to say goodbye, projected expectations. Hello, self-acceptance. The more that we accept who we are and how we're different, believe it or not, the easier it gets to accept that other people are different too. So we bring this work in for our own peace, our own clarity, our own groundedness. And it also helps us understand and meet others with a certain peaceful groundedness too. Acceptance is a very, very powerful tool. Number nine, if I controlled all things in the universe, no one would buy into unhealthy ideologies just because they're popular. Now, I picked one to talk about here. There are many. For this episode, I'm going to talk about the ideology of healthy at any size. We're living at a time when popularized narratives are spun as progressive and right, and that you're wrong to not buy into them. If you follow my work, you know that I've got a lot of problem with the black or white all or nothingness of that. The shame if you don't glob on and question things is not a healthy dynamic. A healthy dynamic allows us to question and lean in and look for proof. Not just buy in because someone tells us it's right. It's regressive to believe in health at any size. And that is a tragic narrative, especially for our youth. The internet is exposing people to this ideology that rationalizes or celebrates obesity. And obesity takes years and mobility off of a human lifespan. And just because obesity is normalized in America does not make it healthy. No matter how hard social media may try, these consequences of obesity are real and they're factual. High blood pressure, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, osteoarthritis because cartilage breaks down from the extra weight on the body. So does the bone and that makes the body hurt. There are digestive issues, sleep apnea, you're at high risk for severe COVID, stroke. And if you're trying to have a baby, obesity absolutely does affect fertility negatively. And media and social media algorithms in the time of fact checking are saying that it's truthful and right to believe health at any size. That is an absolute lie. Self-love at any size and personal responsibility, absolutely. We practice self-love, self-respect at any size. That's different than convincing ourselves of physical health at any size. Those of you who are serious about living a life with ease, about healing your nervous system, about being embodied instead of dissociative from the body, I know that you know that your relationship with food and body is part of the journey. And I know that you want that health because y'all talk about it with me despite these narratives that are so popularized online. So here we have the option to say goodbye irrational and pandering ideologies, hello reality, and the path to true health. All right, number 10. If I controlled all things in the universe, highly sensitive people would say goodbye to drinking too much and thinking it's cute or deserved. Over the course of the podcast, I have turned down many podcast requests for me to be on their show. 
And I really felt torn about it because some of them had really big followings and I know would connect many, many people to the show. And that is my calling. But I've turned down shows that pair a drink with an episode. I do not want to support in any way, shape or form directly or indirectly this nonchalant pairing of alcohol with more and more and more everyday activities. I come from New Orleans. I don't know that there is another place on earth where drinking is more encouraged, celebrated, normalized. Especially those of you who believe you have adrenal fatigue, that you may have some autoimmune issue going on. Alcohol wreaks havoc on the system. It hasn't released as of the date of me recording this right now. But the next podcast that I am on is with Jill from Sober Powered. So go check that out if you're interested to hear us talk about alcohol and addiction. Jill's got two years of sobriety and that's what her podcast is about. And I love it. I am here for it. I was very honored to be on her show as a guest. So maybe if this applies to you, maybe 2022 is the year where you say goodbye to adrenal fatigue and hangovers And hello to healthier forms of escapism. Because that's the deal with alcohol, isn't it? It feels good to a point and then it feels really terrible and really bad and takes a toll on every single organ in the body. You can still have some healthy escapism. And sometimes it takes closing the door on over drinking to give permission to find those healthier ways of being, of escaping. Because as humans, we're always going to want a little bit of escapism. We can lean into that. We don't have to deny that. But we can find ways that don't shoot us in the foot. All right, number 11. I witness highly sensitive people get caught in this trap of when there's conflict or a weird vibe of over wondering if it's themselves, if it's me. I'll do it in I statements to have it make sense as I describe it. So if you always wonder, gosh, is it you? Did I do something? Did I put my foot in my mouth? Did I misunderstand something? That may be a sneaky place where your codependency is showing itself. There's a fine line there between conscientiousness and personal responsibility and over-owning the weirdness or the awkwardness or a passive-aggressive vibe within an, an interaction. So if you always think it's you, maybe that's the thing to say goodbye to. Goodbye to always thinking it's me. And hello to sometimes it's them. And if you sort of fall victim to the reverse of not practicing ownership, and if there's awkwardness or discomfort or a misunderstanding pointing the finger outward, then maybe your appropriate goodbye is to say goodbye to blaming and hello to personal ownership. There's so much freedom when we just own who we are, the mistakes we've made. So many people live their whole lives so scared to own their mistakes, scared to feel the shame that they were taught to feel if they made a mistake. But when you run from that for your whole life, you practice running. I don't want to support you practicing running in this way, I want to support a deeper reality that when you stop, own it, turn, deal with it, and know that you can, you actually transform it. Imagine what it would be like to learn how to ground yourself in those moments with other people that can get weird and for you to have a certain faith and trust in what you're sensing. That you are so balanced in the center between over-owning or blaming, those two polar opposites, that you can trust what you feel and what you sense. This is also part of how we let go of anxiety. That'd be a great goodbye, wouldn't it? Goodbye, anxiety. Hello, centered groundedness. Because we can better tap into our intuition. And when we know how to do that, We get to say goodbye to regret and self-annoyance and hello inner guidance system. I think I've lost track of the numbers, but the next one I want to say is that there's freedom 
in choosing to let go of wanting it to be easier. Take that in for a minute, how natural it is for any of our inner children to want to cross their arms and pout and whine to the sky, but it's not fair, but it should be fair, but I want it to be fair and I want it to be easy. I spent a lot of my years there. It did nothing but extend my pain. Because when we do this, what we're also doing is refusing to deal with what is and just crossing my fingers and hoping that something will just get easier. It's a very passive way to be. And when we live from passivity, our own self will resent us because we were never meant to be completely passive creatures. We were meant to be actionable for our lives. We get this one precious life. So if I controlled all things in the universe, yes, like a magic spell, all sensitive people would let go of the absolute energy drain and waste of self-talk that it is to perseverate on, I want it to be easier because I think it should be. And then we get to use that energy to actually deal with what is. There's so much paradoxical freedom here in accepting that life is hard. Being alive is a struggle. It always has been. And we are no different in this modern age than our ancestors. With their difficulties, our difficulties just look different. And we offer ourselves this kind of freedom when we accept that it's hard versus constantly trying to get to the mirage of this place where it should be easy and we expect it to be. It's just a mirage. And what happens to the guy in the desert who keeps going after the mirage? He dies of thirst. He dies of thirst. So we let go of that mirage fantasy and we deal with what is. So goodbye longing for easy. Hello embracing what's real. And the last thing I want to share with you about what you might choose to say goodbye to I hope all highly sensitive people for 2022 say goodbye to resisting inner child work. Basically, this inner child work that you hear me so on fire about if you're an avid listener of the show or if you come to the live streams, getting past your resistance to actually tend to this inner child, it basically gives us what we missed out on. So in my own life, I wasn't hugged. I wasn't nurtured a whole lot. Wasn't seen I was encouraged to be a good girl, but I wasn't really encouraged to find myself or to explore or to experiment. So in inner child work, I've learned how to encourage myself. I've learned how to feel like a real adult instead of an imposter adult. I've learned to give her worth that was eroded from a dysfunctional childhood. In a sense, when we do inner child work, we're saying goodbye to a sense of lack And we're saying hello to inner abundance. And I don't know about you, but I have to believe that we weren't born and put on this planet to endure lack. If feeling a sense of abundance is available to us, why would we not do that? In a lot of ways, this list talks about empowerment, even though I never use the word. Because to heal and to grow, we are tasked with empowering ourselves. And we say goodbye to so much that no longer serves us. And that part of the journey can be scary. It can make us feel like we're losing a lot. We might have lost a lot of people in 2020 and 2021. We might be changing and outgrowing people in some of our social networks. We might feel sort of new or raw or exposed. We might feel lonely. And all of our self-care, all of it, comes down to embracing ourselves as we walk this path. So as we move through the grief of what we say goodbye to or what leaves us when we don't get to choose, we also get to say hello to so, so much. I hope there's something in this episode that helps you say hello to your deep inner self Hello to the possibilities of wellness, of growth, of self-development, of letting go of what no longer serves you. Happy goodbye 2021, huh? And happy hello 2022. We made it. 
We started the show in 2018. I cannot believe it's 2022, y'all. Thank y'all for being part of this journey. Thanks for saying goodbye and hello to a brand new year again with us. Thank you, Patreon supporters. All of you keep the show commercial free. We hope to keep it commercial free all through 2022. When you sign up for Patreon, that's what you're voting for. Thank you for sharing the shows that inspire you with other people. Just thank you for being out there in the world. I've got a hand on my heart, and if you'll let me, I'm sending some energy to you right now that we are connected, that everyone who's listening is connected, because something in this big old giant universe, some kind of something, energy, human magic, light, what do you want to call it, drew all of us right here. Take a big, deep breath into your heart and just feel that connection, that you were on alone that you are connected to other people that are saying goodbye in so many ways and saying hello in so many ways. It's okay to hope in what's good and light and positive for this new year. Don't let any depression or anxiety gremlins convince you that it's unwise to lean into positivity. They just want to be fed and you can starve them. Light and love and goodbye to any gremlins. Stay tuned for some really new, exciting things that we have for you that we will announce soon. If you're on our Patreon, you've already gotten one little announcement, and I'll share more as we go. Light and love. Happy 2022. I'm an emotional badass. You're an emotional badass. And together we are where Moxie meets Mindful. And I will see you right here next time. Bye-bye.